Hey guys, I'm Will. I'm Alex. Today we're going to go over a bar crawl and specifically some theme type bar crawls of the Dayton, Ohio area. We lived there a couple of years ago and we still look back very fondly at our time in Dayton. Yeah, so give it a check. Give it a check. <laughs> give it a check. <laughs> Let's dive in. We have our Ohio shirts, we're ready. Itinerary number one, the Oregon District. This is the easiest place if you want to go uh, with like a little group. And a lot of the bars have a deal where if you buy a one wristband for I think $10, you get a that's your cover for all of them. I know a lot of people don't like paying covers, I don't really either, but a lot of these places do have live music, so you kind of are getting a deal because you get to see multiple different bands uh, on any given night really. All right, so let's start at point one. Um, I would start at point one if I was doing a bar crawl, probably, um, because it's, it's a brewery. It's a local brewery called Toxic, uh, and they have a really wide selection of brews on tap. It's got some nice indoor seating. So they have a popcorn machine that's free, which mm -hmm. is a nice feature. It's a really good place to start because it's still like pretty chill, and it's right at the beginning of the Oregon District. So let's go to point two. Um, from there, we probably go to Blind Bob's. Um, Blind Bob's is a pretty cool place. Um, a lot of their music that they have, and they do often have live music, is more of a hard rock or like metal punk vibe. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be a little, a little loud, a little gritty. It's um, not, it's not going to be like mainstream <laughs> anything in there, which is what I love about it. Pro tip: if he still works there, there's a bartender named Tyler. My friend and I went up to Tyler and we were like, can you make us a girly drink? And whatever he made us, I don't know what it was, but it was so freaking good. And so for, for the next like year, every time I went there, I just found Tyler and asked for a girly drink. Yeah, it's a, uh, a great place for a PBR. <laughs> Not a lot of seating inside, but they do have a little side patio that has uh, outdoor chairs and tables. Uh, sometimes in the colder months, uh, they put out a little fire pit. So that's kind of a nice feature too. So yeah, from there, the weed connection is a good spot. So uh, this is more of like a gritty Western theme bar. They have live music as well, a good stage area with um, a second floor balcony. And there's also a second floor balcony that looks out onto the street and they have a bar out there. We discovered that Tumbleweed had $10 mimosa buckets on Sunday mornings. Yep. I don't know if this is still a special, but we ran into that and that was a good day. Yeah, it's, it's a fun little place, that's for sure. We would move on from there after a couple of drinks probably. We and, would. Uh, especially if you're on a Saturday night and you've been out for a while and maybe you're with a group of friends um, and you're having a really good time, stop four, that would be fun, would be Newcombs. Um, I think this was an optional stop because You've had a pretty chill evening if you've been to Toxic Blind Bobs and then Tumbleweed, but if you go to Newcomb's, like your night is gonna is gonna take a turn. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I did like about it was they had a tiki bar up back. They had a sneaky balcony. Like you go inside to the right, there's a stairwell that goes up, and I think you can reserve it for private birthday parties and stuff. But if no one's reserved it, usually it's pretty empty, and you have a view of the dance floor like across. <laughs> the bar so you can see the craziness going on, but you're kind of laid back. Moving on to my second bar crawl itinerary, this is the Third Street route. Cool, so stop one. Um, we started with another brewery. Um, it's always a good stop. They do have really good, good food. Good tacos. Um, they had to eat, they had, yeah, and like tots, really fancy tots, tanger yeah. tots. Yeah, um, Warped Wing is good, it has board games, a lot of room in there. Um, yeah, it's a good place. They have a wide variety of beers, um, just like Toxic does. So yeah, I would definitely start there. Stop two, where would you go from there? I would go right across the street to the Barrel House. Mm -hmm. Barrel House is a bottle shop. Um, there's no food, they normally have a food truck. This place, if you're looking for any sort of beer you could ever imagine, they, they have that type of beer in there. From your $20 Imperial Stout to probably like a $2 Bud Light or you know PBR, they whatever have, it is. Bud Light there? I don't know. I know they have everything though, so. <laughs> Let us know. All right, I would head right on across the street again to the Therapy Cafe. Yeah, therapy is really fun um, because once a month, I believe it was the last Friday of the month, they do a silent disco. 
I know that's not everyone's scene and we didn't think it was until the first time we had gone either. So yeah, they're so much fun. You just pay a little deposit for your headphones and they had three different DJs and you go in there and you know, the headphones light up to the color of the DJ that you're on. It was uh, red, blue, green and it was a different genre. So one guy does a throwbacks, uh, one guy does a hip hop and then one did a like, like EDM, EDM, like house, yeah. yeah. Like we never went to therapy when it wasn't silent disco night, but when it was silent disco night, we, we made a night out of it. We probably Great. did this crawl and we, yeah, we went out specifically to go to therapy because it was so much fun. Mm. Where to, not next, but what would be another, another night? Another night. Uh, we would do what we we're calling the downtown route. We would start at something like Dayton Beer Company, DBC, as it's known in the local area. I know we keep starting at brewing companies, but I think it's just like the perfect way to start yeah. the night. And they have a ton of seating there, um, especially outdoors. Their seating area has tons of picnic tables and bocce ball. And uh, in the summer months, they do a, a, an outdoor bar as well. So you can go to the indoor bar and the outdoor bar. We also participated in a cornhole league that met at DBC. Very competitive. Yeah, yeah. They had something like twenty-five plus beers on tap um, from from their brewery, mostly from their brewery, and then some from other guests as well. And they have board games. The food's decent. It'll it'll do in a pinch. It's uh, not quite as good as as Warped Wing in our opinion, but maybe, maybe it's better now. Yeah, I, I just remember their pizza didn't blow me away. Well, yeah, that's a, definitely a great spot, especially for a large outdoor space. If you're looking to, to bring a big group and spread out when it's a nice day. Bring your dog. Yeah, a lot of dogs there. Good mm -hmm. doggos, good watching. Yeah. So where would you go for stop two? Next, we walk further into downtown to get to the Century Bar. So the Century mm -hmm. Bar is a little bit more upscale, I would say, or that's the vibe they put on. It's kind of a speakeasy style. And the guys in there dress, you know, in the three-piece suits. Really good bartenders, very professional. Mm -hmm. And um, if you don't know what you're looking for order, you're not a cocktail person, they can recommend you. So the drinks can be a little pricey, and it, eight, nine bucks to like, 15 bucks, so just know that going in, but it's not really the place where you're gonna like drink three, four drinks, unless that's the only place you go. So next up after Century is a part that I lovingly have called choose your gay bar adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you there's good deal. four bars right in one little cluster. Uh, that's the right corner, MJ's stage door and mask. Um, and they all have a little bit of a different feel. I'd say the right corner is kind of like low key. It's like an older crowd. Um, they had a jukebox. The pool table was a staple. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember they had a little popcorn machine there too. Um, but if you're looking for a little bit more uh, rowdy time, I would probably go to MJ's on Jefferson Street. Um, they host a lot of events, and uh, one of Alex's favorite, the uh, drag yeah. performances. <laughs> Shout out to the Ruby Girls, my girl Redeema. <laughs> it's a lot of fun at MJ's, like especially if you have a birthday party or like a bachelorette party or something. I would I would hit up a Ruby Girl show there. The third one is Stage Door, uh, and they had a dance floor as well, but we just hung out kind of in the bar area. Right. If you're looking for something really rowdy. Um, mask would be the place um, because they have a typical club experience upstairs mm -hmm. uh, and then downstairs they have like go-go dancers and like <laughs> they have a know. variety of performances True. in the downstairs area this one has a cover um, beware i would say the one big place in dayton that's like has a club type dance floor with all right, so next up would be the University of Dayton route. So this one is definitely more of a younger crowd type bar. Uh, so if you're not looking for that, you can just go ahead and skip over this or go back to one of the ones that you're more interested in. We'll start at uh, the Field House. Um, the Field House is a good old fashioned dive bar uh, and it's surrounded by dinner options like I think Brown Street, where a lot of these bars are located, right next to the university, has probably the most food options around. Mm -hmm. So Fieldhouse, we really enjoyed. Low-key vibe. We were there, there was like no one there, but I'm sure there yeah. are days when it gets really crowded. We were just there at an off time. I guess where would we go next? So as the bartender at Fieldhouse would tell us, tonight everyone's at Tim's, aka Timothy's. 
Definitely more of a college feel here. It's more of a dance type bar with like a TJ and yeah, it's definitely a place where they, they have some good drink specials. I think like Yingling's like two or three bucks. Stop three, I would say check out Milano's. Milano's is more of like a sports bar type feel. Um, so if you want to go there, it's got tons of seating, kind of like a Buffalo Wild Wings type feel. They have tons of TVs and great to watch like March Madness, college football there. Definitely a good place for pizza. Um, mm -hmm. They have good pizza. Pro tip, all the students Uber there. So whenever we would leave, the, the Uber would just be surging. But if you just wait, like 15 to 20 minutes, it will go right down. Cause you just have to wait for all the students to get back. Right. And then you can have an affordable ride home. So we changed our beverages for this next crawl. Cause this segment is called the classic cocktail route. Cheers. Cheers. We would probably start this bar crawl at the Century Bar. I know it's already on another list, but since we already talked about that, um, we're just gonna move on to the next stop, um, which would be Crafted and Cured. They have really good like charcuterie boards and snacks and stuff like that. And their beer list is, is extremely impressive. Uh, they have a, you know, a thick book that's like this of just mm -hmm. like laminated pages and pages and pages of beer. So from there, there's a place called the Van Buren Room. Yes, and when I wrote this crawl, it was really new to Dayton. I know they have housemaid spirits, mm. and they were attached to the Belle Dave Distillery, so right, I think yeah. that'd be a good place to get a cocktail. So with stop three, we're back in the Oregon district. Um, there's a restaurant called Solar, which I know was like a very fancy place that a lot of people would get reservations to go there. Definitely recommend giving that a try, if not for just drinks, you know, get a reservation and go out there for a date night or something. So option four. It, it's called Lily's Bistro. Um, this place was really cool because they also had a brunch on the weekends. Um, Lily's Bistro, if it's not too late, um, this is a good spot to go for a drink. They do have like funky cocktails. They had, when we were there, they had like curious cocktail Thursdays and stuff like that. I think that about does it for our cocktail route. <laughs> I, have a lot, I have a lot more martini to drink, so... Next up, uh, Dayton also has great arcade bars. Yep. So, so stop mm. one would be Canal Street Arcade and Deli. This is a great spot because they have so many different types of games, vintage to, you know, modern, but it also has a really cool feel because it's got like a little seating area that's like, you know, rugs and they have a jukebox and and as the name suggests, there's a deli. So these are some of the best sandwiches in the city. And yeah, I miss those sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, they were open for lunch most days too. So it wasn't just like a nighttime bar. You could go there really at any time. Yeah, where would you go from there? So since this is an arcade specific route, we would jump over to DK Effect, which is not really close to the Canal Street at all, but yeah. we're just telling you guys the arcade bars in Dayton. Yeah, this is definitely one of the places that we frequented because we used to live really close to here. Everyone just always had such a great time there. Um, they have all types of games. They even have one of those like punching bag things. So <laughs> oh, yeah. you could take out some anger on a Friday night if you've had a long week or they, whatever. They did the Ski Ball League as Ski well. Ball, yeah. And how it worked was every time you bought a drink, they would give you a little copy of Token. Across the street is an authentic Mexican restaurant um, and that place is awesome. Yeah. So good. We talk about it all the time. So. Yeah. All right. So the next option on the list would be Hole in the Wall or Ned Peppers. These are two conjoined bars. Hole in the Wall is more like a pool area. There's a little like dance floor area, but Ned Peppers is the, the arcade bar. So, you know, one entry price gets you into both. I think it's like a $5 cover, like a lot of the bars down there in the Oregon district. Can't really bring too big of a group in there, like I said, because it's kind of small. Definitely a nice spot if you're if you're trying to start your night at a arcade bar and go to some of the other portions of the Oregon district for there. Right. So now, if you're not familiar with Dayton yet, um, they have a minor league baseball team called the Dayton Dragons. If you leave a little early from the game, let's say you could go to Bricks. Uh, Bricks 
with two X's. It's like basically right across the street. Um, from there, they have some, some good cheap beers. They have a nice outdoor patio section. And I think that's the best portion of the bar because if you leave the game early, you can get, get drinks there and hang out. Um, and also watch the end of the game fireworks. Another place for food that's a little bit better and they have a little bit more options for drinks and, and better beers if you're into that is a Mudlick Tap House. Yep, short walk from the stadium. They just had really good menu. Like it was surprisingly really, really good. And, yeah, um, I think we got some yeah. like fancy French fries or something like that yeah. or whatever. And it was just like, just really well made and presented. And Next stop is lock 27 and that is directly next to the stadium like you could throw a rock and hit it they have a lot of beer have a lot of food so from there um the southern bell tavern is is a good place to go i think it's more of a sports type bar but it's got a lot of pool tables like mm -hmm. i'm talking like six pool tables yeah. seven pool tables <laughs> More towards the dive bar -y type scene. There's a couple bars on that block. Yeah. Okay, so this one isn't necessarily a crawl, but I couldn't not include it in this itinerary because we, this was one of our favorite bars that we went to. So if you live in St. Anne's district or the historic Hoffman neighborhood, this is like an amazing local like neighborhood place that has Really, really good beer, really good food, really good vegetarian options, and they also have really good brunch. And this place is... Fifth Street Brew Pub. It's just got a great ambiance in there. Everybody's super nice. You know, they got a great patio space. They make all their own beer. They also feature some guest ones as well. In the winter time, they have this Thin Mint Stout, and it's literally like a Girl Scout cookie in a beer, and it's one of the best beers I've ever had because they only had it for like a month or two during Christmas time, December, January, and man, that was good. If you could walk in the snow to that place and get one of those Thin Mint Stouts, like, yeah. <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> That's nice. Where would we go from there? Maybe after brunch, I would have to make a pit stop over to the cat cafe across the street. Mm -hmm. It's called Gem City Cat Cafe. Right. It's not like free reign of cats. You have to pay a little bit of money and sit in the cat like containment area, I guess. Yeah, it's a really cool space because they find homes for them as well. You can adopt these cats. And I think they also offer catch and release classes because at least where we lived, like I think anyone from Dayton knows that there might be a cat problem. Well, we hope you liked this video. Hope it was informative, especially if you're new to the Dayton area. And if there's anything we miss or when you should add on, let us know. We'll definitely like add them to the description and stuff like that. We always want to support local businesses. Like and subscribe if you want to see any of our other travel videos. Bye guys. <laughs> Till next time.